So let's uh, continue with the with the second lecture. So just before that, let me notice that in the theorem of types, f1 and f2 should not be degenerate. If they are degenerate, there is no reason why the limit of this uh, quotient should exist. Okay? It could be zero or infinity, or it could be anything. Okay. Gn should also not be degenerate. Uh, also in the theorem, by the way I built, uh, I state the theorem, x0 should be equal to 0. Okay? So the process, the self-similar process should start from 0. But there are more general versions of that. And uh, I think I said something wrong also in the, in the, in the second example, the extremal process. Uh, the scaling property of the extremal process is of this form. Okay, so just uh, extremal processes are alpha self-similar. Okay, just uh, three remarks that I observe now during the the break. Okay. Well, there are, there are many other results uh, connecting uh, a stable, uh, not the stable, self-similar processes via a scaling limits, and there is one that I want to point out that is more recent, that was uh, proved by uh, Benedict As and Mirmont and uh, later generalized by Bertuan and uh, Igor Korchemsky. Sorry, Igor, I think it's not the right <laughs> spelling. Korchemsky. Okay. And this connects scaling limits with self similar Markov processes. Let me just state uh, the theorem of uh, Haas and Mirmont. I will not state the result uh, by Bertrand and, Korche and Korchemsky, but it's very similar. And uh, notice here that by self-similar Markov process, we will mean self-similar processes having the strong Markov property. Is everybody familiar with the strong Markov property? Yeah? Everybody knows what is a strong Markov process. Okay. If not, just let me know. Okay. So what is the theorem of uh, Benedict and uh, Gregory saying is that if we take x k for k positive be a Markov chain a discrete Markov chain taking values in the integers with transition probabilities Again, by the probability that x at time l plus 1 is equal to k, given that x at time l 
is equal to n, this will be given by p n k, and this is for k in between 0 and n integer, and the sum from k equals 0 to n of p n k is equal to 1. So it's a non-increasing uh, Markov chain. You cannot read because uh, of the light. OK. So it's a non-increasing increasing Markov chain, homogeneous in time. OK. note by xn l for l bigger or equal than zero the markup chain issued from x0 equal to n, OK? So for all n integer positive, we denote xnl, the Markov chain started from n, OK? And p n a star, the law in zero one of xn one. So p n a star dx is the sum of the weights. P and K multiplied by the Dirac mass at K divided by N in the X. Okay? This is for X in zero one. Okay, okay so is this atomic measure on zero one? Okay. And the theorem reads as follows. So assume there is a sequence a n of the form n to the gamma l of n for n positive for some gamma is strictly positive and L is slowly varying. Okay. And a measure mu on zero one such that A n times one minus x times the measure p n star dx converges weakly as n goes to infinity uh, towards mu dx. Okay. So this convergence holds. 
for every continuous unbounded function on zero one, okay, towards the integral of mu for the same function. Okay, so if we have <coughs> that, then in that case. We have that the process y n t defined by x n, so that the Markov chain started from little n, a time integer part of a n t divided by n as uh, for t positive, okay, n positive, then the, the process or the sequence of processes So the sequence of processes defined by this relation converges in the sense of Skorhoth towards a self similar Markov process with non-increasing paths okay let's say this process is x And furthermore, X can be represented, can be expressed as XT is equal to X zero times the exponential of minus sigma of tau s for s positive where sigma is a subordinator so a levy process With non increasing, with non decreasing paths, okay, and tau of s is the infimum over u is strictly positive, such that the integral between zero and u of exponential of alpha sigma v minus dv is bigger than s, okay? And sigma has a Laplace exponent which is related to mu, okay? I will not say the relation at the moment, but just check the, the, the theorem. So we have again a normalization of the process, okay? So we have a Markov chain that can be normalized in this way, okay? 
under this assumption of regular variation for this sequence and convergence of this uh, measure, okay, we have that the limit exists, exists in the sense of score hot topology. Okay? The limit has a strong Markov property, okay, as it does for x. Okay? And because x has uh, non-increasing paths, the limit should also have non-increasing paths. Okay? So that's the first part. And then the second part is that xt can be obtained as the exponential of minus a subordinator at a random time. And this is uh, something that is very, very important. Okay? So we are observing the same path of sigma, okay, but at a different rate. Okay? A rate that is dictated by this uh, function that the functional that is here. Okay. Um, well, this is a, a result that, for the first part, I will say, is not surprising. It's just something similar to what we saw in Lampert's theorem. You have a question. The alpha here is, uh, oh, gamma. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is alpha somewhere else? No, just there. OK, yeah. Gamma is, uh, the gamma there is the gamma here. OK? So for the first part, this is not uh, surprising. It's just uh, another version of uh, Lamperti theorem, okay, of scaling limits. And it's natural to have uh, the Markov property because we have a Markov process at the beginning. Okay? But the representation is something that uh, so far is uh, surprising. Okay? Because uh, so far we haven't said anything about uh, Levy processes. Okay? But this, uh, this fact, in fact, is not uh, something that uh, they observe in the theorem. I mean, it's n it was not the first time that it appeared. It's something that was uh, already known. It's something that Lamperti observed in the 70s. Okay? So Lamperti did a lot of uh, contributions to the theory of uh, self-similar processes. Okay? In particular, he established a connection between positive self-similar Markov processes and Levy processes, from where this relation is coming. Okay? So what they did in the, in the paper is to identify the limit, identify this uh, sigma, okay? and, and identify the law of uh, sigma. It's pres uh, more precisely, to express the Laplace exponent of sigma in terms of mu. But I will, I will make uh, all these statements more precise. But what I wanted to, to notice here is this representation. Okay? That the limit process is the exponential of minus a subordinator time change. Okay? And this is uh, the main motivation of this course. That there is a connection between X here equals to one, yeah. In this uh, construction, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If the process hits zero, it stops. Yeah, because of the because of the way we build the process, this process is absorbed at zero. Okay, and the same happens for that one. Once it hits zero, it dies at zero. Yeah. And they actually prove uh, a bit more. They prove that uh, the lifetime of this process converges to the lifetime of this one. Yeah. So that's right. Uh, ah, 
Maybe it's not very convenient to take x. Should be set, maybe. <coughs> Say it's C. Because x was for the Markov chain, isn't it? So they also prove that if a n is the absorption time of x at zero or at any other or any other point, okay, just the absorption time, okay, into one point, okay, then a n times a n converges as n goes to infinity in low towards the exponential functional of minus gamma sigma s ds okay and this is the lifetime of exponential minus sigma tau s s positive And they prove that the convergence holds not only in law, but also that the convergence of moments uh, holds. A n, A n the power k, the expected value converges as n goes to infinity to the expected value of this exponential functional to the k. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, another limit theorem now connecting and answering somehow your question, which is under which conditions we have the Markov property on the limit. Just something like that. OK. Uh, the theorem of uh, Bertuan and uh, Korchemsky reads uh, something similar, just we have a more general convergence here. Uh, I didn't say here. I didn't say anything here because there, there is something missing here. Mu is a measure that is finite. A measure, a finite measure. Okay? The measure mu should be should be finite on zero one. Okay. For the definition of AN, it is a time of XN. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Well, the, so the theorem that I state before about the characterization of self-similar processes as scaling limits 
was one of the main contributions of Lamperti to the theory of self-similar processes, but, but that was not the, the main one. There were two other uh, important contributions at least. The first of them is that what we call nowadays the first Lamperti transform which states that if x is a self-similar process started from zero, then the process theta t defined by exponential minus, so let's say here that uh, an alpha, what am I saying, one over alpha, yeah, alpha self-similar process started from zero, then the process exponential minus alpha t x exponential of t as t is in minus infinity plus infinity is an stationary process. Okay? And any stationary process can be represented in this way. So that is uh, why uh, the work of Lamperti is also very popular in the community of stationary processes. Okay? And that is, that is very easy to check, isn't it? It's just, uh, it's just a straightforward consequence of uh, the scaling property that this process is stationary. Okay? And the same if you take a stationary process, you invert this transformation, you easily check that the process has the scaling property. OK? OK. And the second uh, transformation is the main motivation of this uh, course. And this one establishes a bijection between self-similar processes that are positive and Levy processes. I will state uh, that clearly. I will state, I will state a theorem. Okay. And let me just mention that there is a third uh, transformation that uh, obtained Lamperti. is that, but is not related to, to self-similar processes, third, OK, 
okay, is that um, there is a bijection between uh, continuous state branching processes and spectrally positive uh, Levy processes. That is processes with no uh, negative jumps. Okay. These two bijections are given again via time change. Okay. I will not. Uh, I will not establish this one. I will not uh, describe this one. But I will describe this one, which is our main motivation. So again, Lampert is very popular in the theory of uh, continuous state branching processes. Okay. And then he retired. So let me write uh, the second Lamperti transform. I will just call it all the time Lamperti transform because I will not be speaking about the two other transformations. Okay? But it reads as, fo as follows. In this in a paper just before he retired in the 72s. In the 72. It reads as follows so let x, x, little x for x in R be a family. of R value one over alpha self similar Markov processes and let T0 to be the first time where x becomes negative. Well, this depends on the starting point. Or So just the first passage time below zero for x, okay? And we consider the process killed at uh, zero, okay? So let x tilde x t indicator t is smaller than t zero for t positive be the process killed at T0. Okay. So when the process goes below zero, we will 
leave it at zero. We will, so we will take zero as a, as a cemetery state. Okay? So zero is a cemetery state. We have more white uh, chalk. Mm. It looks blue. Okay. So it reads uh, as follows. So we have that. XT so X kill at zero can be written as XT X indicator T is smaller than T zero is equal to x times the exponential of psi at time tau t x to the minus alpha times the indicator that t is smaller than x to the alpha a infinity. And this holds for all t and all x positive. is a possibly <coughs> killed levy process taking values in R and tau t is the inverse of the additive functional given by this expression. This for t is smaller than a infinity, which is the integral exponential alpha psi s ds. Um, okay. The will, well, what is a, levy, a possibly killed Levy process? Is uh, is a Levy process? that uh, can only live up to an exponential time. Yeah. Where do you close the exponential? Uh, exponential. Oh, I close it here. OK. Yeah, so the indicator is uh, for the exponential. Yes, thank you. Yeah, if not, it will be stick to 1. You're right. Thank you.
I will just remove the possibly killed, because it's not very clear. So what do I mean by a killed Levy process? It's just a Levy process killed at an independent exponential time. Well, I didn't want to delete this, but it's just uh, just the coincidence of the main theorem of Lamperti and the theorem of Bertuan and uh, of Hassan Mirmont. <coughs> so killed at an independent exponential time of <coughs> parameter. Q bigger, bigger or equal than zero. Q equal to zero means that the exponential is infinity, almost sure. So just, so we observe the path of a Levy process up to an exponential time, okay? And when that, when that exponential time rings, we just stop the process and we send it to a cemetery state, okay? And we can identify the cemetery state in this case by taking it uh, to be equal to minus infinity. just because the exponential of minus infinity is equal to zero. Okay. Um, so there is something else. So we have that x can be written as exponential of a kill levy process, time change, okay? And the process is killed, and I will, now I will let you know when this is killed. Okay, so we will have that um, psi has an infinite lifetime, so q equals zero, and the limb soup of psi t as t goes to infinity will be equal to infinity almost surely, okay, if the process is starting from x never hits zero, um, yeah. for all x positive for all x positive okay so if we if we don't if we don't hit zero if the process x does not go below zero okay we observe the whole path of the process i okay mm. C2, 
is the lifetime of psi is infinite almost surely so again q equals zero and the limit as t goes to infinity of psi t is equal to minus infinity almost surely if now the process hits zero in a finite time and it hits zero continuously okay. and the third condition is Q is strictly positive so the lifetime is finite almost surely okay most surely and this happens if the process hits zero in a finite time but it does it by a jump okay and these are these are all the possibilities there are no other possibilities Why there are no other possibilities? Because by the scaling property, it's very easy to check that if any of the conditions, C1, C2, or C3, is satisfied for some x, then it is satisfied for all x. Okay? Well, this, this is essentially the end of the theorem. But let me just say, so why there are no other possibilities is because if the conditions are satisfied for some x, then they are satisfied. for all x positive okay and furthermore with these three behaviors of psi um, we have uh, included all the possible behaviors of a levy process okay for levy process we can only have uh, four behaviors let's say one is that q is strictly positive so the lifetime is finite the second is that or the, the three others are that q is equal to zero and the process drifts to minus infinity okay or it oscillates or it goes to plus infinity yeah and this the process, the case where the process goes to plus infinity or oscillates is covered in this setting. Yeah. Uh, in C1, you write limits in, in superior? The limit superior, yeah. The lim sup. Limit superior. Yeah. Should I write it like uh, that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's the limit superior, yeah. So when Q is equal to zero, these two settings uh, cover all the behaviors of psi. Not means, but limit. The limit, the true limit. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 So for a Levy process, we have uh, three possibilities when it has an infinite lifetime. 
So either it goes to minus infinity, or it oscillates, or it goes to plus infinity. There are no other options, OK? So this is one, when it goes to minus infinity. And the two other are here, OK? And the other possibility is that the lifetime is finite, okay? which is this one. Okay. And by construction, yeah, so by construction, look, we are taking the same path of psi, okay, but up to some time, okay, and if we kill the path of the process, the process will go to the cementary state by a jump. Okay, so that is why here the process is jumping to zero. Okay. Um, yeah. So in this case, yeah, this case here, we observe the whole path, and the path is going to minus infinity. Okay. The time change will not change that uh, that behavior. Okay. It will just change the rate at which we approach to minus infinity, but we will approach to minus infinity continuously. Okay. So the exponential here will go to zero continuously. Okay? That is what is happening here. Okay? So in all the cases, for every path, you will approach to uh, zero continuously. In the, exp the exponential of minus i will go to zero continuously. Okay? And for the other case, we will never hit uh, zero. Okay. Um, why we will never hit zero? Because remember that psi t, okay, uh, no, 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 no. yeah, yeah, psi t grows uh, linearly, or, or at least linearly. Psi grows at least linearly, OK? because of the law of large numbers for Levy processes, OK? So that will make that if the limb soup of psi t as t goes to infinity is equal to infinity almost surely, then the integral will be equal to infinity almost surely, OK? And why this uh, integral is relevant? Why because this integral that is here is the lifetime of this process. Okay? x times x alpha times a infinity is the lifetime of x by the expression that we have here. When we are above this level, okay, this inversion that is here, is not well defined. It goes to plus infinity because there is no value s for which we are above that level. Okay. So if there is a t such that t is bigger than x alpha a infinity, then the set s strictly po of the s strictly positive for which the integral between 0 and s exponential alpha psi u 
du is bigger than t times x alpha okay is empty okay so that makes that tau of t is equal to infinity for those for that t okay then the exponential uh, yeah the exponential of psi tau t uh, will be equal to zero okay because psi has been taken as minus infinity okay as the cementary state and the exponential of the cementary state is zero okay so that is why this is the lifetime of x okay so in this setting the lifetime is uh, infinity almost surely okay so we never hit zero yeah so in the c2 and c3 cases the lifetime is finite almost surely and in the c1 case <coughs> it is infinite almost surely okay is that clear is that okay okay so this guy is the lifetime okay in the c1 case because the process is going to plus infinity in some eventually okay this exponential functional can only be uh, infinite okay so the lifetime will be infinite in the two other cases because the path of psi grows at least linearly or is only observed in a finite interval of time the lifetime is finite almost sure okay so in this case when q is strictly positive we just observe the path up to an exponential time so the integral up to that exponential time has to be finite okay the lifetime of of x x for all x yes it's confusing you're right yes that's right that's right yeah here we have to to make uh, clear that this for x yeah 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 that's right yeah thank you thank you very much Kui. Is that okay? Okay. How much time do I have left? So we start at uh, 40, 45. We should finish at 4. 4.15. I still have uh, half an hour. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let me tell you how this uh, time change behaves or transforms the path.
Okay, so imagine you have the path of Psi. Okay, so it will move, there will be some jumps. And then you have uh, the exponential functional. Okay. So assume alpha is strictly positive. Okay. Then with this uh, with this integral, we will observe when we are close to zero, we have something. This exponential is close to one, so essentially it grows uh, linearly. Okay, then it becomes a bit bigger the path. Okay, so the exponential functional grows a bit faster. Okay, and then, well, so let's say yeah, it grows essentially linearly, and then it grows a bit faster. Okay, and then it goes negative, okay? So the exponential becomes smaller, okay? Smaller than one, okay? So the slope of this exponential, the exponential is still, grow, the, the function is still grows, but grows as a, at a lower rate. So the slope is smaller. Then again, we are close to zero, so it goes faster. Again, it becomes bigger, so it becomes even faster. Okay, so this is the this is uh, how the path of A will look. Okay, but what is tau? Tau is the inverse of uh, A. Okay, so this x is defined in terms of the inverse of A. Yes. Okay. So what is gonna uh, what is gonna happen when we take the inverse of this? The inverse will grow linearly when we are close to zero. Okay. And then it will grow very fast in these slopes when we are close to zero, and very slow when we are far from zero. Okay. So. Tau t will be something like linear, then uh, it grows in here, it will grow something like that, and then here it will do something very fast, okay, then again it will do something like that, and then again slow, okay? So this is, this is how tau t looks like, okay? So, observe that here we have the time scale of the inverse, okay? But observe that this interval of time, okay, will carry all this path, okay? So, in the exponential, okay, we will see this path, but it squeeze into this interval, okay? So, it, it will squeeze here, okay? And this one, okay, it will be stretched in here, okay? So, what we saw there, so, just to make this more slightly more dramatic, so imagine this is just something that looks like that, okay? So here you will have something that looks a bit bigger, okay? Compare to this one here, okay? Yeah, and when we are close to zero, we will leave the path essentially the same. Yeah, okay. So it changes the rate at which we, we travel along the path, okay? 
But the path is essentially the same. We just play with it. OK? We are not changing the, the, the jumps, essentially. We are just taking the exponential of the jumps. OK? We are just taking the exponential of the, of the continuous uh, part. OK? Is that clear? Yeah? I mean, that, I think that is uh, kind of very important because uh, if not, it's uh, quite uh, ambiguous, this, uh, this transformation. Well, it, yeah, it, it's just, uh, I mean, imagine it's the same thing, it's just, uh, just. I just wanted to, to explain that this bit that is here, with respect to this one, okay, it becomes very small, okay, and in fact this one, it becomes bigger. My, my drawing is not best, because I did it uh, the other way around, but... Uh, Okay. Okay. Um, what I would like to do in the rest of the course is to prove this theorem. The proof is not very difficult in principle. And then try to get some properties uh, from Psi transfer into properties of x, okay, and vice versa. From some properties of x, say in some cases something about psi, okay? That uh, could be easy, but in fact it's not easy because the time change is not, uh, is a random time change and it's not straightforward to translate the properties from psi into the properties of x, okay? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Um, there is an example that uh, is well known and is studied in almost any course on stochastic processes, on stochastic calculus, which is the case of a Bessel process. Or a squared Bessel process. So this is the, this, the example of a Brownian motion killed at zero and squared vessel processes. Okay. So in this setting, we are going to consider a Brownian motion take psi t, which is two times a Brownian motion, plus two times c times t for t positive, okay? And we will take x to be the, x is the one self similar Markov process uh, obtain via Lampertis transform. So x t of x is given by 
x times the exponential of psi tau t divided by x, where tau of s is the infimum of t bigger than 0 of the integral between 0 and t of exponential psi u du bigger than s. Okay? And x here is positive, t is positive. Okay? So here we assume also that uh, psi has an infinite <coughs> lifetime. So q is equal to 0. Okay? So there is no killing time for psi. Okay. Uh, here, x has continuous paths. Okay. And it can be seen that x is solution to the stochastic differential equation, which is d xt is equal to twice the square root of xt with respect to a Brownian motion plus a delta dt, okay, this for t positive, and mm, yeah. And I will tell you what what delta is. Delta is related to c. Okay. This is the SDE that uh, defines a square uh, Bessel process. Is everyone familiar with stochastic calculus? Is there anyone that hasn't followed a course on stochastic calculus? No? Okay. okay. Um, so to prove that, should I leave it as an exercise? Maybe. Thing. So yeah, let's do it as an exercise. So for that, apply. Ito's formula for um, for y t defined by x times exponential of two times b t plus c t. Okay. Um, and use uh, Dubin's Schwartz, Schwartz um, theorem. the martingale empty given by the integral from 0 to t of the square root of x of exponential bt plus ct as bsds yeah. 
Marcus quadratic variation is um, x times the integral exponential twice bs plus cs ds. Okay? Okay, so, so you apply Ito's formula, okay? You will find that you can write, write yt in terms of an integral with respect to m, okay? But that Martin, this is a martingale. Uh, this is with respect to b, b, okay? Yeah, with respect to the same b. So this martingale has this, is, uh, this quadratic variation, okay? So the martingale taken at the inverse of the quadratic variation is a Brownian motion, okay? That will be beta, okay? the beta that we have there, okay? But in fact, this time change that we do have here is also the time change that is appearing in the Lamperti transformation, okay? So with that, we will reach this expression here. Yeah? Okay. There is something else. Um, so I leave that as an exercise. And also, uh, the exponential functional of exponential twice bs plus twice cs ds is finite almost surely if and only if uh, C is strictly negative. Okay? Mm. So delta, so delta here, delta is equal to twice C plus one. So, if C is bigger or equal than zero, delta will be bigger or equal than two, okay? And in that case, X will not hit zero, okay, almost surely. And that coincides with what we know, because a vessel, a square vessel process of dimension bigger or equal than two never hits zero, okay? And delta is the dimension of the square vessel process. I didn't mention that. So delta is the dimension of the square vessel process, okay? And for dimension is smaller than two, that's equivalent to say that C is strictly smaller than zero. We know that a Bessel process or a square Bessel process will hit zero almost surely in a finite time. Okay? Before writing another example, let me write, say two more things about the theorem.
The first is a remark, or something that I didn't say, is that in the theorem, um, one should read that every Self-similar Markov process uh, killed at zero can be expressed like that and psi is unique. Psi x is a self-similar Markov process. Okay, so if you have a self-similar Markov process, you will have you will find a unique uh, self-similar size so that the representation holds. Okay, so if you start with a psi, you will find a, a self-similar Markov process. And the other is a, is a corollary. A corollary which uh, reads as follows. <clears throat> so let xx be a positive self-similar Markov process so P S S M P that dies at zero, okay, at time T zero. So T zero may be uh, finite uh, or infinite, okay. And define CT as the integral between zero and T of xs to the minus alpha ds. Okay, so here is is one over alpha positive self-similar Markov process. CT is this exponential, this uh, functional here. So we take excess to the minus alpha. Sorry, the blackboard has a memory. Uh, so it's excess minus alpha for t positive. And um, we take bt to be the inverse. OK. So we have that under. P x, so the law of x is starting from x. process the process psi t defined as the log of x 
at time bt divided by x0 uh, for t smaller than ct0 minus. OK, so the integral of c up to time t0. So before, so see, this integral here is well defined before c goes to 0. If it goes to 0, this, uh, this uh, integral will blow. OK, so this process is a Levy process. It is the Levy process associated to x. It's a Levy process that starts from 0, whose law does not depend on x. And the description C1 to C3 holds. Okay? Meaning that if x does not hit zero, okay, then psi has an infinite lifetime and its limb soup is equal to plus infinity, and so on, OK? Uh, and the lifetime of psi is c t 0 minus, OK? Which is the integral from c t zero x s to the minus alpha d s. Okay? But this is the limit on the left. Yes. We, yeah, we just approach this uh, as uh, we grow to t zero. It, it's the same, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, ct0, and this we know is an exponential of subparameter q, which does not depend on x. Okay. It's just uh, writing the inverse of the transformation we had uh, in Lamperti transformation. Yeah, okay. Are there any questions or comments? I want to <laughs> continue all night long. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if uh, if not, you can ask now, or we can uh, discuss tomorrow. Thank you.